and a phone call. Hello? Well, uh, yes, sir. I was gonna call and get me a quote on some bush hog work done, please. Yeah, it's about, I don't know, probably about a half acre, maybe an acre. Uh, got some grass and some trees and some stuff on it. Yep, yep. I ain't actually looked at the property yet, but I was just calling to see how much it'd cost you. Yeah. Don't be that guy. It. How to quote really depends on where you're located at. In all honesty, it, uh, your experience is one of the key factors in how you quote everything. It really is. It. Sorry for the squeaky chair, but I literally just got off the phone with somebody that said pretty much the exact same thing and I could tell right away what he was trying to do and he was trying to quote for himself by calling somebody else to use their quote for his quote don't do that what you got to figure out is how much you're worth how much your equipment's worth and how much you're wanting to make It, it really isn't rocket surgery, guys. It's really not. When, when you answer the phone call and they have a legitimate job, not just some you know, person trying to use you, uh, you just got to ask them a couple of questions. If they want bush hog work, it's, well, how much are we talking? We talking quarter acre? We talking 300 acres? All right, field work. So as far as cutting pastures, just tall grass, stuff like that, you can have a set price. To say, easy work, hundred dollars an acre. You go out, you cut it. You know you're making pretty good time. You got to have your leeway in there. If the ground is just miserable to drive over, and you're just creeping and getting beat to death the entire time, and you can only do quarter mile an hour, you're not going to make money at $100 an acre. And you're going to have to tell them that. you got to ask questions about that. Do they know if the ground's flat? Do they know if it's got stupid steep hills or really super deep ruts or giant perk test holes that you can drive off into? Trust me. And, uh, you know, tear some equipment up. Obviously, they're not going to know every answer, but you can get a feel for what's going on before you even take the time to make the trip out, to look at the property, to anything else you prefer to want to do before you make the quote. Now, I've come to find out with pasture work, it's not really that much. It's not really, you can't go out and charge $4,000 to, to cut a quarter acre of pasture. You, people are going to laugh and hang up on you. Now, my experience comes from two YouTube videos and, uh, well, I just bought a bush hog yesterday, so I'm probably the pro with this. Uh, it really comes down to uh, your experience. How much you want to make and how much time you want to put for, or how much time you're going to have in the job. It, it can honestly be a quarter acre for four thousand dollars it could be 15 acres for a hundred dollars i mean it you're not going to have a set rate you're not going to have a set hourly rate for your jobs you're not anything like that it's not going to win you got to price per job and how much that job takes now again if it's if it's the legit person calling, you can ask a lot of questions. Say, all right, well, what you got going on? You got 
quarter acre, you got just a lot job, you want some undergrowth cut out. Okay, well, is it really super thick overgrowth that you're pretty much going to have to bulldoze through? Or is it just some sparse trees, you know, a couple couple of vines, something like that, that you can just fly around? Is it real tight areas, real narrow trees that you can't get through? Those kind of jobs, you're more or less going to have to ride out. Now, the pasture land is a little bit easier, you know, you can fairly well street view that and uh, get a pretty good judge on what you need to do. Most everybody knows what their pasture is. Now the people that buy a property and they want you to go in and clear the undergrowth so they can maneuver around, create some trails, whatever. You're going to have to ride out and you're going to have to talk with them. It's the only way to know that you're not going to get screwed. Uh, as far as tilling, you got to have a minimum charge. Anything I do has a minimum charge. Tilling, obviously, you're not going to get the bush all grates, so you got to have a less minimum charge. What you set your minimum charge at is up to you. I know some people, they'll call around to see how much it costs to rent a tiller and all that stuff like that for a day, whatever, and they'll base their prices off of that. I don't do that because... I'm not manhandling a 40 horsepower tiller around the yard trying to till their stuff. It's just, I'm literally going out there in a pair of shorts and some sneakers and a t-shirt. It's not hard work. You don't need to charge $3 million an hour for that. Now the minimum set rate is, you got to adjust your miles to cover your gas to everything like that. I mean, you're not going to go travel 60 miles to do a five by five till and make any money. You're just not. So you got to adjust the mileage of travel and stuff like that. You can go out and make a giant loop. Say you want to run from here to a city that's 45 minutes away to get a job that you're going to get $100 for. Obviously it's not worth it. So what you try to do is you try to set up a day to where it's a till day. You just go out, you try to pick up jobs, on the way and then on the way back you try to pick up jobs and your experience will tell you that the time you need in between jobs say you got to travel 20 minutes to the first job and you know that job's going to take 45 minutes and the next trips 30 minutes to the next job that job's going to take 10 minutes etc you know that way you can get your money from however many jobs you got versus trying to charge one person to cover the trip. It's m more fair to the clients and majority of the time you're gonna get more money. The absolute best thing that was ever told to me about a business. You can make a million dollars off of one person have one incredibly happy person that goes out and brags about you and tells all of their friends, 20 people. You go out and make a million dollars off of a million people that are absolutely happy and will call you back for every freaking thing that they need done and brag and everything like that that's 10 million people giving the same math. You don't make a killing off of one person. You don't. Obviously, you got a set rate. Obviously, you got a price. You got to charge and make money. Why else would you be doing it? But you do not need to go out and make all your money for the month off of one person. Eventually, you will get those jobs to where you can make all your money for the month off of one person. But you don't need to. Because that one person is going to go tell 10 people. 
and maybe five of those people call you. That's five new clients. You go make it a hundred people that tell 10 people and half of them people call you. Okay, well, there's a whole lot more people. I suck at math, by the way. There's a whole, there's a whole lot more people to call you back that are extremely happy that's going to call and tell their friends, oh, I know this guy. He's going to be great. He's going to do you right. He's cheap. He's responsible. He's reliable. And he instantly gets to me every single time. I never, I shouldn't say that because obviously you can't predict weather in this type of business. You can't anything like that. I usually try to stay within a week of contact to where you call me, hey, I got this job, yada, da, 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 can we do it tomorrow? Chances are probably not, but I can get to you within the week. Sometimes in prime time season and the prime tilling seasons, I'm swamped. That's where playing a cutthroat business absolutely sucks because people talk. People like me know the other guys in their area that do a good job, that do reasonable prices. They're not playing a cutthroat game. They're good, responsible guys that you know for a fact, if you use your word to recommend, they're going to come out and do the job and do it exactly like you would. When you get in with those people, and they get swamped they're gonna call you hey man i got this guy over here he can't i can't get to him will you go take care of him and when you get swamped you call him hey man i got this guy over here will you go take care of him because i am absolutely swamped i can't so you share it works trust me i've gotten very good repeat clients from somebody else recommending me to do their job and vice versa. I know people within about a hundred to 120 mile radius that I have actually personally called up and be like, Hey, you know, what do you do? What is all this that you offer? What did, you know, yada, da, da, da. I never asked the prices, never anything like that. You get a feel for people. And if they seem like stand-up people, throw their name out. If they're too far away, somebody contacts you from 100 miles away and you happen to know the guy that travels up there, throw their name out. I can't speak for him, you, you know, but I do know he does the work. And then touch base. And when I say touch base, I don't mean just with the guy, hey man, did you get the job done, yada, da, da, da. I mean with the client that he did to the person that you re or that you recommended him to they're going to be honest with you you know like hey i'm sorry to bother you i was just wondering if the guy that i recommended did he come out was he reasonable did he you know was he a stand-up guy and then you call him and we're like hey man it is greatly appreciated that you did that for me anybody up that way I will recommend to you. Do you want that from me? Most of the time they'll say absolutely. Can you do it for me if they come from my way? Absolutely, man. It's greatly appreciated. And that's how you form the link. There's 300 million people out there that need something done and 100 guys that does the tractor work. Why are you trying to cut their throats to serve all of them? You're not going to be able to. That's kind of where it plays to not be the cutthroat guy and ruin your connections. Because most of the guys that's doing this jobs and stuff like that, we're all pretty good dudes. Obviously, there's going to be the new guy that tries to get the tractor that just wants to, you know, make a little side money, yada, da, da, da. Don't even worry about them. The 10 people they take care of is absolutely nothing for you after you build your business. I gotta go back to work. Hang on. 
and that's the other part help the new guys once you're established and you're big and you get the little five by five till job that you really don't want to mess with find the new guy chances are he is dying to have the five by five job because he wants to make the money he wants to make the tractor payment he wants to eat he wants to whatever and throw him the bone like look man I can't quote this job it's too small for me whatever I'm too busy whatever the case let him get the experience tell him help him answer his questions it I've never understood cut from game. I haven't it it doesn't make a lick of sense for the hundred guys to try to cut each other's throats to get the one job when there's a million people out there that need jobs done. Why? Why? Obviously some people are going to be cheaper. Obviously some people are going to be more expensive. Obviously you get the job that you really don't want to do. You really, whatever the case may be, you're going to throw a high quote out every once in a while. You're going to throw a low quote out every once in a while. You're going to... You're going to win and you're going to lose throughout the entire career path that you choose in life. It's what you learn and how you take those losses that's going to help. Now, with that being said, don't go in over debt and invest whatever amount of money you want in a new truck, new trailer, new tractor, new equipment, you gotta blah, 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 blah. No. Thinking that you're gonna make money. You're gonna struggle. And you're just gonna have a pointless payment that you're not even getting profit out of for a very long time until you build your clientele, until you get your repeat customers, until you get established you're gonna hurt so the first question that you need to ask yourself do I personally need a tractor In my case yes and I needed the new tractor that I purchased too because well I, I like new stuff sorry but uh actually I needed it a whole lot more than I needed the old little 650 that I had I love that little John Deere. It's still in the backyard. That's my little, that's my baby. That created everything that I got. But anyways, you buy what you need. If you need a tractor with a bush hog, because you got stuff that you need to cut, you got some buddies, whatever the case may be, buy a tractor with a bush hog and offer bush hogging. If you're hardcore into tilling and you need 500 acres of garden till for yourself buy the tiller don't go swiping credit cards taking loans out whatever the case may be for shimmy shake cut it off for pointless equipment that you don't need because a tiller there is a whole lot of uses for a tiller Obviously, you can grade with them, you can till with them, you can everything with them. You can, you can do a lot of cool stuff with a tiller if you need a tiller. But from February till April, May, June-ish is the only time you're really going to make any profit on a tiller. And you're not going to make millions of dollars from a tiller tilling gardens you're gonna make money you can probably if you work it good and you stay at it pay that thing off in a couple of years but it's gonna sit for the rest of the year and do absolutely nothing Besides, sit there 
and deteriorate and lose money. That's the truth of it. Bush hogs. Unless you start getting into the brush and the undergrowth cutting and the property clearing and stuff like that, throughout the wintertime, grass don't grow. What are you going to do with a bush hog besides leave it sitting? That space that you need, that's a shed that you need, that's a whatever that you think you need to cover up, to use, to store the equipment. You don't need it. Don't buy it. Just thinking you're going to make money. Chances are most tractor guys know their tractor guys and they're going to have a tractor anyways. And that's the kind of people that should get in this business. You're going to need the tiller. You're going to need the bush hog. You're going to need the box scrape. You're going to need the post hole digger to whatever. You're going to need it in your own personal time, your own personal life. That's why you justify buying it. You don't, you don't go out and spend $5 million to start up a computer business because you like to read books. Just saying. Just like you don't go out and spend $5 million to start a tractor business because you like to sit on a couch and eat Cheetos. I'm kind of going to skip this together and just throw it all out at one time or another. So there's going to be cuts, there's going to be breaks, there's going to be rambles, there's going to be yada da da da. If you guys want me to break down how to quote for tilling, how to quote for bush hogging, how to quote for box braid work, how to grade and work, I can't. You want me to tell you where to stay away from, where to price your stuff, where to anything like that? I'm not going to do that because that's, that's your area supply and demand. You live out in the middle of Mexico, you're not going to need a finish mower because the middle of Mexico is dirt. If you're up in Alaska, Chances are you're not even going to need much of anything besides a snowblower. You know, just like if you're in Florida, you're not going to need a snowblower. So we're going to generic, we're going to gist all of this and clump it up into one how to without the specifics. <clears throat> Because once you get into the specifics, that's your personal. And just like I'm not going to tell you what my rates are, I don't expect you to tell me what your rates are. That deals in your area, your state, your city, your town. There's a whole lot of variables that add up to your price. So we're not going to get into that with this video. Just the general basics and my experiences with how to quote stuff. Like, subscribe, thumbs down, thumbs up, comment, whatever you want to do. Open for discussion in the comment section below. <clears throat> Let's get to it. You don't, you don't ever, ever 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 call another company and use their quote you don't <laughs> i have had people meet me at somebody else's property that they got called to bush hog so i could give them a quote so they could give the quote to their client. Literally, I've had that done. The only way I knew is because the original client walked out and was like, hey, what are you guys doing out here? 
and then it all broke down and well needless to say i actually got the job and the other guy's now out of business uh it's not good business practice it's not you can tell people you're not going to be the cheapest you're not going to be the most expensive but you're going to get the best quality for the price if you go with yourself or go with me whatever it it's not it's not a cutthroat game you will gain a lot of enemies in the business that could be potential friends I've had so many people go out and cutthroat quotes just to get the job, do a horrible job, and then I have to go back and fix their problems. It, I understand starting out, you're not going to have good business, you're not going to have good clients, you're not going to have the top-notch quality of people that's been in the business and been in the game for 10 whatever years. You know, so be honest. Like, look, you're my third person. I kind of know what I'm doing, but I kind of don't. If you're willing to work with me, I'm willing to work with you. This is my price for right now because I don't know what I'm doing. That's not cutthroat. That's being honest. It. The best way to start out, getting on that note, the best way to start out, is when you get your tractor and say you get your box scrape because for some reason everybody gets a box scrape as soon as they get a tractor call your buddies up hey man give me some beer money i'll do that for you hey man give me some gas money whatever i'll do that for you as long as you're not breaking anything as long as you're not just completely destroying whatever project you're doing your buddies are expecting your buddies work i mean it's not they know <laughs> okay you're not going to be 25 dollar and a 12 pack of beer is not going to be the same as a thousand dollar job i mean it you know and more than likely as long as you're doing it and you're doing it with the mindset that i need to get better because i'm going to do this for a living or do this for a side hustle whatever those little bitty teeny tiny jobs that you do will get you the feel for your tractor get you the idea of how long something's going to take get you the idea of how much fuel this thing's going to drink how much everything how much my truck's going to take to haul it how much how much should i charge what is this worth to me if you think it's a thousand dollars an hour good luck if you think it's fifteen dollars an hour good luck it, there's I'm, there's no reason to have money in it to discuss money physical money in this it is your experience your abilities how many people around you actually do the work does have it's kind of like supply and demand the more things in demand without the supply you can kind of raise the price a little bit. The more supply there is, the less demand there is. You got to kind of tweak the prices. Uh, it, there is no set price. There's not. There's no per hour price. There's no nothing like that. Just figure out what you think you're worth, what you think your tractor is worth, and how much time you need. And how much you need to make a living and after that your experience will help you quote your experience will help you judge how long it's going to take it will tell you what you need to do it'll tell you pretty much everything that you need to know to make a quote i throw a ballpark quote when i do it over the phone I will throw, okay, it's going to cost $500 with the potential of being less that 
I can get in there and I can fly around and I can do this job really quick, obviously I'm not going to charge you $500. If I get in there and it is just grueling and a miserable job, it may be a little bit more than $500. But I feel like $500 will cover the job. Obviously, you got to be honest. If you're going to get in there and do a job in an hour that you said was going to take five hours, they're not going to give you $500. If you go in there and the job's complete and you're still goofing off and trying to make it to five hours, they're going to know that. They're going to notice that. It, you can't hide it. When a job's done, the job's done. Get the heck out of there and make more money off somebody else. It uh, it kind of all boils down to your experience. Get it however you can. Go out and cut a right away. Go out and cut the side of the road that's overgrown. Looks like crap. Call up people with fields. Hey, let me come cut it. It, you know, give me some fuel. I'll come cut it. Whatever. Do it for free. Go out in the woods and play. Just play. You're not going to make a kill in the first year. You're not going to anything the first year. You're going to learn. And as long as you're learning, you're still in a profit.